topic of this conference is on meta analysis, meta type of research. Yes. Uh, this may not be very uh, well uh, understood or uh, known for the business community. So, how would you say this is important for the business community sure. and, and, and sure. practice? Sure. Yeah. Um, there's lots of academic research being done around the world at all times, mm -hmm. but part of the problem is there's individual papers on very narrow topics. The advantage of meta-analysis or overall review papers is they take hundreds of papers mm -hmm. and they synthesize them down into one paper of findings. And you, for a business community, that's very important because you can really believe the results. They're mm -hmm. much more robust. Mm -hmm. If you look at cancer treatment in the medicine world, mm -hmm. The best treatment is they take all different doctors' mm -hmm. cancer treatment and they do a meta-analysis which mathematically pulls those results together mm -hmm. and gives you one set of best results. Mm -hmm. So I think for business people, where they should look, they should not be looking at individual papers that sometimes makes the newspaper because mm -hmm. it's kind of mm -hmm. cool or interesting. Right. They should be looking at meta-analysis because that's a synthesis of all of the academic research on a narrow topic. Oh, very interesting. So could you give us a couple of examples, maybe from this conference or, sure, or meta-analysis sure. that you think are in particular interesting. Absolutely. Um, one that I, um, that I was actually involved with, with some of my students at all, is we did a study on relationship marketing. And relationship marketing is how to use interpersonal relationships or uh, relationships between firms in order to impact business performance. And we took over 150 academic papers over about 30 years. Um, which represented about 150,000 business relationships. Wow. And we mathematically put those together. And then we compared the effects by country. Mm -hmm. And something that was very interesting, if we compare it to the U.S., because about half the studies were from the U.S., mm -hmm. on average, relationships have a bigger effect on performance, like sales growth, profit, share of wallet, mm -hmm. market share, um, outside the U.S. than inside, about 11% more. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you look at the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, they have about a 55% bigger impact. So mm. if you build a relationship in those countries, mm. the effect on performance is about 55% high. The two countries that had the lowest impact of relationship on financial performance was Norway yeah. and the Netherlands, yeah. minus 37%. So mm. it's saying that a relationship, building a relationship, trust, commitment, has less impact on sales growth in, for example, Norway than it would in the U.S., mm -hmm. and significantly less than like China, Brazil, mm -hmm. or Russia. That's very surprising. I have to look into that in more detail. Yes. <laughs> so, so do you have another example that... Yeah, um, another thing that we've looked at is um, they've compared brand effects to relationships, and they've compared it over the time. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they said, Let's look at all the uh, mergers and acquisitions that have occurred over the last 15 years yeah. that are publicly available. And when a firm buys another firm mm. and they pay, let's say, $100 million, mm. the accountants go through and they say, well, there's only $20 million of buildings and plant and equipment. Mm. How do I attribute that other $80 million? Mm. And it gets attributed to brands or relationships or different areas mm. or patents. And it's been interesting that over the last 15 years, the value of the impact of brands on firm mm -hmm. value has gone down mm -hmm. consistently over the last 15 years. The value of relationships have gone up. Mm -hmm. So now when firms are buying other firms, right. they're paying more for good relationships right. with their customers. Right. So if I bought right. your firm, for instance, yeah. and you had a very good sales force yeah. with good relationships yeah. with your customers, yeah. I'd have to pay a lot more than for that. Right, so companies should really pay attention to building relationships. Absolutely. Yes, very good, thank you. So um, if I'm very interested in meta-analysis in general, where should I look? Should I go to Harvard Business mm. Review or should I? Uh, good, good question. Yeah. It's um, prior to coming into academics, I actually spent about 15 years in business. Mm. And I didn't really, I wasn't aware that there was so much information about there. Kind of the way it works in the academic process is, first, people do individual studies. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend in most cases for business people to try to go dig through these individual studies. They're very narrow. They're not very transparent. But after a few of those studies get done, mm -hmm. they get act put together in these meta-analysis. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, with the internet and such, you can just Google a topic, mm -hmm. right. relationships, meta-analysis, or brands, meta-analysis, or maybe 
the sharing economy meta-analysis, whatever you're interested in, right. and these papers will pop up. Yeah. And those are probably the best papers to look at. Right. Now what happens after that, once it becomes a meta-analysis, a very R review paper, then the good ones sometimes make it into Harvard Business Review, but they publish a very small number. Um, other ones make it into books. Right. But it typically takes almost seven to 10 years from that very first study before that information gets added to a book. Yeah. <laughs> so if you wait till it goes to the book, you've kind of given up a 10 year head start. Yes, okay, good. I also know that you recently had that very interesting um, uh, uh, meta-analysis published in Harvard Business Review about a topic that many Norwegian practitioners is highly concerned about these days, GDPR. Can you just give yeah, us I, a few of the highlights from that? Sure. And uh, to clarify, it wasn't actually a meta-analysis. It was a, a paper reviewing and it was on privacy. And mm -hmm. what we found was this, that when you have a data breach, the data breach obviously has a negative impact on your stock price mm -hmm. on the day it's announced. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the closest competitor, sometimes it has a negative impact, sometimes it has a positive impact on the competitor. Mm -hmm. right. And that's kind of interesting. And so yeah. we looked at about 800 different data breaches over a 10 year period. And what we found was when the breach is very big, yeah. so if you have a firm and you have a big data breach, yeah. millions of records, in that case, your competitor stock price goes up because they say, you had such a bad situation, yeah. customers are gonna switch. However, if you have a minor breach, your competitor stock price also goes down. And the reason that is, is people say, well, if you lost some records, probably I'm gonna lose some records too. Yeah. So kind of interesting, it can have either a positive or negative. Now, the second thing we found, we said, what can firms do to minimize the negative effect on their stock price when there's a data breach? Mm -hmm. And what we found is there's two things, control and transparency. Mm -hmm. If a firm in their privacy policy and their disclosure are very clear to their customers, what are they doing with data? And they give the customer an opportunity to opt out and say, I don't want you to do that with my data. Mm -hmm. When there's a data breach, it doesn't have as big an impact on the stock price. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the customers feel I'm kind of in control of my situation. Mm -hmm. Now it's very interesting here just in May 25th, this year, this year, mm -hmm. just a, a few weeks ago, GDPR became effective mm -hmm. in all of the European Union. And in that case, the rules on how you share data has significantly changed and opens up to give consumers a much more transparency and control of how their data is being used. And actually one of the benefits will be to firms that if they do have data breaches, it's not gonna have as big an impact on their stock price. This is very interesting. We should really read that Harvard Business Review. And that's, Review. that's in Harvard Business Review. You can just Google that and yeah. that'll come right up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.